recording, but I will be sharing it with anybody who signed up. So if you ask a question, somebody other than on the call might see the question. Um, I'll do a bit of housekeeping while we're waiting for some more people to come in. Um, so um, just for audio recording quality purposes, if you don't have a question, I'm more than happy for you to come off mute and ask questions as we go. Um, I'm really happy for you to do that. The only thing I would say is we've all been on those horrid Zooms where somebody's off mute and there's a hoover going in the background or a kid dancing and singing to its favorite tune. Um, so if, um, if you're not asking a question, can you stay on mute just so that it doesn't mess with the recording? Um, so um i'll give it another minute and then we'll we'll go so what i'm going to show you tonight is i'm going to show you my whole system how it works there's some tricky bits in it um which is you know hint hint why we do a program on this but i'm going to show you uh, i'm going to show you how it works and then you can go i'm going to have a go myself um and oh there's somebody who's been on the program just joined actually um so i'm going to show you it how it works there is some tricky bits in in the process um i'm going to show you how you can extend this system to take you all the way to a sales call uh where people are booking in your diary automatically without you doing anything um so i'll show you that as well so um the way i work if you've never been on one of my sessions the way i work is i show you everything because we all know that the uh, everything that you can get is on Google, right? It's all, <laughs> it's all on Google. The bit that people come and work with me for is because Google doesn't fill in the gaps. Yeah, and doesn't give you the order and beat you up when you don't do it. I don't mean literally. I don't beat people up really. Yeah, but you know what I mean, right? So um, we're going to have this for a couple more minutes of beep, beep, beep. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Step by step, I'm going to show you the map of how I do it. Um, uh, and if somebody's feeling really brave, I might show you how you can do it on uh, live with somebody else's business. So um, the, you can ask as many questions as you like. You can ask whatever you like. Just remember um, the rules about the mute just so that we get a good quality recording. Is that all cool for everybody? awesome right so at some point i want to test this on some people um so i want to kind of open up a discussion i'm not going to kind of do anything embarrassing to you or anything so don't worry about that but i want to show you and uh, i think vikesh has jumped on as well so vikesh i might pick on you because uh, you're yep. in the middle of this um sure. so you were Vic, uh, vikesh i didn't know you were coming so you you know what i'm going to talk about because you've been through the process uh, the only bit you might not see is the bit that we do after the 100 leads, but I'll show you, you'll, we'll probably have a conversation about that afterwards. <laughs> right, so okay. So the rapid leads method, right? If I just kind of give you the backstory to this, so you understand what it is, then I'll show you how to apply it. So at any given time, stock record, any given time, there's only a percentage of the your target audience, your ideal clients, shall we say, who are actually looking for what you're selling. It's not all of them, and it's not all of them all the time. So we kind of have this process of, I've got to find clients who need me now, because we've all had those people who say, I need you in the future. And we can have another conversation about those. It's how do we find the people who need us now? And so a whole industry has been brought up on this how i'll help you find people who need what you sell in other words we'll harass them we'll send them four email messages we'll do all sorts of stuff but really if we're all honest what we're trying to do is filter through people to find the people who have an appetite to buy fair that's what we're trying to do yeah um so i've always had this discomfort and it's a preference thing of i don't want to harass people now I have done it and it is effective, but you have to do a lot of it, right? I once sent a million emails, right? I'm not joking. I sent a million emails, right? To see what would happen. I made a lot of money, <laughs> right? The problem is within a few days, my domain got banned <laughs> and a whole host of like 
abuse came at me. Um, and I just didn't want that. But at the same time, I needed enough people coming through the mix for me to see how it works. So the fundamental principle is not everybody's in buying mode. Not everybody's got that bit of their brain switched on. So somehow we have to find the people who connect with that with us now. How do we find the people now, which is a sliver of your target audience? It's not. 50%. It might be 6 or 7% if we're lucky. So if we accept that that's the case, right, I'm going to show you how I find them on LinkedIn. So the rules are I can't send them a sales pitch. That's the number one rule. I can't send them a sales pitch. So I'm always looking for a way to attract clients, get them interested without sending them a sales pitch. So here's my process. So I'm going to share screens. Uh, here we go. Hang on a second. Let me get to the. Here's the process. All in pretty pictures. Took me a long time to get all these lined up. Right. So this is the, the very the simplicity of it. There is some complexity into it. And I'm sure Vikesh will say this bit here. Is actually the most difficult bit of the whole process. So, so if we look at this, and guys, I'm happy to share this PDF with you afterwards. So, you know, um, <clears throat> so what we've got to do is out of this mass of people. So there's a mass of people here. Your target audience, your ideal clients, whoever that is. There's thousands of them, millions of them, hundreds of them, however many it is, and whoever it is. Um, uh just uh keep our mutes on if that's all right guys <clears throat> so uh, we're just getting a little wave um so just housekeeping for everybody joining uh i'm happy to answer questions as we go but uh we're recording the session so if we can keep mute on that would be brilliant uh just so that we can make sure that um the recording quality is good um so we've got a mass of people, right? The simple thing is we've got to attract them. Now I'm going to come to a whole thing about visibility on LinkedIn and all that kind of stuff because you can fix that reasonably quick. TikTok and other places, it's a bit tougher, but LinkedIn, it's pretty easy to fix it quick. So mass of people, we've got to find the people in buried in these people and attract them. And there's three really, really simple ways that you can do that. The first one is a PDF, a PDF on LinkedIn. I've made a lot of money and got a lot of business from having one PDF. And uh, we use that PDF across LinkedIn to actually bring in leads. And I'll show you that in real time in a second. The second one is a live event. Now, how many of you just uh, on your link on your um, screens there, there should be a hand in the middle. How many of you are selling services where it's about your expertise? How many are you selling expertise? So either a service or, yeah, quite a few of you, a lot of you. Yeah, quite a few. So one of the things that uh, people say about LinkedIn Lives or webinars, and I completely dispelled this myth, right? People think you do a webinar, evergreen, get it out there, you'll get people coming in on autopilot. It doesn't work. It does not work. It may have worked years ago, autopiloted, pre-recorded webinars, but today they don't work. Also, one of the best things you can do is actually show up. So every week I do free training and I give value. This is not what you're on right now. This is something else. So every week I give value and I give as much as I can to people. Why? Because in the end, if you're selling your expertise, it's not just about what you're selling. It's who's selling it. People buy into you and then your service. So the live events on LinkedIn, which are incredible, by the way, um, the best event platform on social media ever, uh, allow you to attract people and they get to see your expertise. Now, I'm going to show you, I'm going to pick on somebody and share somebody 
uh, that's gone through this process. They're in their last week of this process with us under the 100 Leads program. And so PDF, live event, and then loaded poll. And I'm going to show you the three together. And again, guys, just remember, uh, guys, gals, um, um, feel free to ask questions as we go. So there's those three things. Now, many of you will suffer from low engagement or maybe uh, you tried some of this stuff and it's just not caught traction. I'm going to show you how you get traction. And uh, if somebody's feeling brave, I'm going to show them in real time as well. So if somebody's feeling really brave, um, somebody, uh, what I'm looking for, if everybody turns their hand signal off, I'm looking for somebody who's maybe struggled with traction and wants to be brave. Yeah. Just, just come off mute and say me. Yeah. Anybody who's felt had me. This, who was the, me. Who was the, Isaac, was that Isaac? Yes. Isaac, I'm going to, we're going to do a little demonstration with your profile in a moment. And um, I'll come, I'll find you in a second and we'll solve that. So Isaac, just be ready. I'm going to give you some instructions in a moment. So then we have what we call a loaded poll. These three things, these three things are tools that help us attract, help us attract our target audience. But more than that, they help us attract the target audience who has an appetite to move forward they have a, a goal or they're living with a pain that they no longer want to toler tolerate because we all know by the way that all of our clients need either a goal or pain to actually buy something we don't just buy something for the sake of it we buy something because we need to achieve something we need to get somewhere we need to solve a problem so what makes these things work what makes these three things work is what we call master content. It's a, it's a document that basically gives us all of our ideas and all of our angles that helps us talk to um, our target audience. And I'm going to be very childish now, and I'm going to give you an example. Right. Let's assume, let's assume for a minute, and I'm going to give you a very silly example. Let's assume that my master content is talking about people who want to eat pizza every day without getting fat. Right? I know that sounds ridiculous, right? But let's just use that example. If I now put, create a PDF that says how you can eat pizza without getting fat, I do a live event about how you can eat pizza without getting fat. I know I'm using a silly example but I'm just using it so everybody gets it. How to eat pizza without getting fat. And I do a loaded poll about, would you like to eat pizza without getting fat? Who downloads this PDF? People who want to eat pizza without getting fat. Who signs up for this event? People who want to eat pizza without getting fat. Who votes on the poll? People who are interested in eating pizza and don't want to get fat. So I know that's a really silly example, but very often if you reflect on your own LinkedIn content, it may well be that you're just talking about pizza. You're just talking neutrally about pizza. But actually the master content is about understanding the person's motivation to need your products or service. So it's about understanding their motivation, not your motivation, my motivation. So Tina's raised a good question. What if it's more subtle, like leadership development or supporting? Well, this is where it really starts to get interesting. So Tina's mentioned about leadership development. So leadership development is about progression. It's about moving forward. It's about building a better team. It's about building better leaders. They're all very logical things to say, but for somebody to actively pursue leadership development, they have to push for change. There needs to be a, 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 a cause that drives that change. So Tina, for an example, 
if people have been passed over, let's say it was um, Sarah, no problem. <laughs> let's say for an example, Tina's talked about leadership development. For somebody to need leadership development, they're either in pain or they're desperate to achieve a goal. And actually, the sweet spot for you in terms of clients is that they have a bit of both. We've had those experiences where somebody wants a goal, but there's no pain or discomfort to make them take action. And everybody get that? Everybody seen that? Somebody who goes, I really want to do this, but there's no pain behind them to push them. So most people are running away from something. And this is in big business too, by the way. It's not just small business or, or, or um, what's the word? It's not just consumers. This happens in businesses. This happens in corporates. It happens everywhere. If there's not a healthy pressure behind them and there's not a healthy goal in front of them, people won't take action. And so you can put about five great principles for leadership development and create that PDF, but you won't get anybody downloading it who has an imperative to change. In other words, there's not enough pain. So there has to be you know, enough pain to move them forward. But if you go too far, you appeal to desperate people, yeah? So if you go all in pain, you end up appealing to people who are in, in crisis. And whilst that can be lucrative, many people, many people, um, many people will, will, will push that too far. And what happens is people recoil backwards because they don't want to admit they're in pain. They don't mind resonating with a bit of pain, but it's better to talk to somebody about a goal. But if you don't weave pain in there, you actually lose people. So anyway, all of these three t functions uh, come from one masterpiece of content, which is constructed from an AVP. Once you crack the AVP, all of the rest is basic tutorials. It's like step by step. It's dead easy. The bit that's complicated is actually the AVP. Then I'm going to come to Isaac and I'm going to show Isaac how he can get visibility very, very quickly on LinkedIn. And we'll do that as a live demo. So everybody stay tuned for that. So an audience value proposition is basically a simple way. Oh, my logo's broke there. A simple way to get in the head of your clients. Um. This is the biggest hump you will face in this process. Vikesh, is that fair? Yeah. This is fair. the biggest and most difficult bit. Um, there's a few hands up, so I don't know if anybody's got questions and wants to come off mute or put in the chat and ask questions. Feel free. Um, I just see hands. I think it's a delay from earlier. So, yes, uh, just to answer Tina's questions, if you don't have pain in there somewhere, what you'll have is lots of aspirational people with no motivation to change. So you need a kick up the backside as you need the carrot and the stick, basically, to be crude. If you don't have both together, you, you kind of lose people a bit. So we break this down into four boxes. Now, this is tricky. Anybody feeling brave uh, and wants to. Um, yeah. A uh, can of soup. It is very similar. A uh, can of soup. What? Uh, let's pick on. I'm going to pick on Tina, right? Just because Tina. I don't know whether you can come off mute and we can just do this as a discussion or not. I don't know whether your mic's working or not. But yeah, I yeah, can. my mic's working. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this with Tina's because so Tina, I, I'm not going to ask you about your price point, but tell me who your decision maker is. Um, it tends to be um a head of talent. Um, learning and development, <clears throat> a head of HR, right. or a founder. So one thing I focus on, if you want this process yeah. to work really yeah. well, the first thing is that certain people will have different motivations. Yeah. So HR and talent might be very similar motivations. Yeah. But a founder might have totally different 
motivations. Yeah. So uh, like a founder might be actually they're carrying the leadership. So they're feeling the pressure. Whereas HR, it's like, no, actually, I've got to find this role because my CEO is bearing down my neck. Yeah. So if I just use the talent and HR for the moment. Okay. And then you're going to do um, a leadership development program. Yeah. Yeah, for middle managers in particular or emerging leaders. Um, uh, also to support <clears throat> um, gen, help them retain Gen Zs and millennials. Okay, <clears throat> so just, just if we think about it, most people will latch on and buy something for one very specific reason. Yes, Phil, this is being recorded. One specific reason. All of your secondary reasons, right, will be... Um, uh, supporting but basically what happens is if somebody's got a problem there's one big issue that if you latch onto that big issue you'll get all of the people who have that issue when you start to stack issues yeah. or stack solutions what happens is oh yeah we don't need that we need something more specific and what okay. happens is people gloss over what you've said because you've gone a bit wide okay. so Let's say for an example, let's just do the millennials. So yeah. you're going to retain millennials. I love that you chose that one. That's our kind of most resonant one. Okay. So. Tell me, so the big pains, right, are the things that are actually happening inside the business that causes the retention problem. So mm -hmm. tell me what's causing the retention problems. Um. They can be very vague and broad. Mm. Um, a, f a lack of alignment with purpose. I don't know if that's too specific or... or... No, no, clear purpose. Um, um, their own development, a development path. Yeah. Mm, and a desire for flexibility. Uh, I can't spell, by the way. Everybody's going to learn this, by the way. Right, so I've just put in here a lack of flexibility. Tell me, I, I would also imagine there's a generational cultural thing as well. Yep. Like, I, I'm, I'm technically a millennial, but I'm 1982, so I'm also on the other side. So sometimes... Like, I, I'm a bit more brutal, shall we say, than some of other millennials. Yeah. So generational cultural um, adaption. I'm just going to put that in there for an example. Mm -hmm. So if that's a problem, we'll come to the red boxes in a minute, but if it, that's the problem that's causing some of these mysterious issues, um, then the win is to give them clear purpose. The win is to give them a clear development path. I know this looks like comprehension and real basic, but actually it is. Uh, the next bit is the tricky bit. Generational. Uh, I'll just put culture fit. Um, right. So this is dead simple. So far, this is dead simple. Love it. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. So. If there's a lack of clear purpose, um, millennials feel that their job has no meaning. Yeah. I, now, I could also, I could write like five red boxes off this blue one, but I'm just doing one for here. No clear development path. Uh, just doing it for money. Mm -hmm. Lack of flexibility. Uh, I'm a slave. I'm just going to put that there, right? Yeah. Uh, generational. No understanding of my needs, right? Now, we can say whether that's fair or unfair, but here's the thing. A CEO, a HR person might get these more, but a CEO or a founder might go, I'm paying you to come in. These are the terms of the job. Just get on with it. Yeah. Right? So the CEO might go, do you know what? Um, 
they don't need to have a clear purpose. I'm just being brutal. Yeah. They don't need to have a clear purpose. They're paid to do tasks. They should show up and do the tasks. So the CEO's um, goals will be very different or motivations will be very different. So this is how they, they, they feel. They've got a lack of flexibility. So the employees feel like they're a slave. <laughs> yeah. No clear development path. They're just doing it for money. The job has no meaning. Now, they, they are all the things that the millennial is thinking. So what we need to do is shift that now to what's the HR? What's the problem for HR because of the lack of clear purpose? Yeah, attrition. Yeah, attrition. So we've got losing people faster than we can hire. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what's the problem if they've got no clear development path? Um, uh, struggling to replace managers, lack of flexibility, can't get people to fill roles, and no one's conflict and uh, grievances between generations. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just putting this into, and I'm doing this really quick, and I'm putting it into a HR manager's world. What's happening if the millennial has a lack of clear purpose? Well, we're losing people faster than we can hire. It could also be they don't actually believe in the work. They're just doing the minimum. They're quiet quitting. Yeah. Yeah. It's all of those things. HR. Okay. What do they actually want? They want to fill roles. HR. Yeah. People yeah engaged right they want to support uh, business success and agility uh yeah but they, uh, i'll come to why i'm doing this in real time yeah, I, I like how you're doing it because you're getting inside the mind of the hr person so thanks dean sorry yeah brilliant build a reliable team uh can't fill can't get people to fill roles um I'm just I'm just basing breaking this down. Conflict grievances. Um what do they call it? Uh, collaborative teams across generations. Now, if I'm a CEO, I would have totally different answers in these boxes. Yeah. Now I've done this really rough, but these red boxes, red boxes are basically the boxes that they should be more specific. The big wins are the broader, more agility. Yeah. Yeah. But what we're trying to do is land. I've not done it very well here because I'm doing it rough and un unplanned. Those red boxes, you go through an exercise to land those into very specific situations so that people can fill roles. So what I can then do is use the a and the b ones together mm -hmm. so i've got this carrot and the stick now these are quite still quite broad i'd spend some time trying to bring them down uh to okay um your well the real world impact is you're actually filling it with temporary temporary staff you're uh hiring people knowing full well that they're going to leave You've accepted the fact that these roles are going to be conveyor belts. You know, you could have all of these things in these symptoms. Yeah. Then what you do is these red boxes become your master content. This is what gets the attention of people. So um, if I started to do a PDF about why you can't, what, how to retain millennials and get the best out of them. Yeah. Yeah. Or how to how to how to recruit and retain millennial workers. Yeah, I like that and get the best out of them because to your point about too much stick, uh, you know, it there has to be a um not too much pain, but something inspiring in there as well. Yeah. So yeah, you have to you have to give people the future, but mm -hmm. also 
uh, they need to feel a little bit of uncomfort from where they're at. Yeah. So once we've got this down, and sometimes as Vikesh has found, <laughs> you have to work on this multiple times. But what we do is we go to LinkedIn with this and we start to post about it. We start to post not just links like this, not promos. We actually start to talk about those red boxes. Why? To test them. Because once we start to test them, we start to see what catches. So this is where we're going to do an exercise about how do we get visibility on our content. So Isaac, tell me a little bit about what you do, because we're going to do this in real time. I'm a retained executive recruiter focused on uh, basically two areas. One, executives for SaaS software companies and the other for larger fortune companies for chief data officers and chief digital officers. Let me just find you on here. There he is. So here's Isaac. Now I'm gonna let you into a little secret before we get on to how do we make this all work, right? I'm going to uh, pick on Isaac and I'm gonna show Isaac something so isaac is posting relatively re reason reasonably often he's got four thousand connections so isaac this post not this post because that's a share this post here can you tell me how many impressions you got on that post um looks like uh well i got two uh i got two thumbs up um i yep. don't see the uh it underneath is underneath is somewhere here on your side on LinkedIn. Oh, on my it's, side. Oh, okay. It'll say how many impressions you've got. Now, before I go into showing you how you get the whole lead process working, I'm going to show you a map of the whole process in a moment. Mm -hmm. One of the things you have to do is build your visibility. And when you build your visibility, what you can do is there's a cheat to get the traction. So I'm going to show you this cheat now, which you can use. And we have a little group you can use for free to help you build the traction. It doesn't replace or fix anything other than it will get you the traction. So people start to see your content. And when they start to see your content, they start to see your lead magnet, your PDF, your event, and all these other things. So Isaac, uh, do you know how many impressions that one got? I apologize. I'm still scrolling through uh, trying to find it. Uh, I can put it in the chat if you like. Okay. Um, so I'll just paste the link to your post in the chat and you can just click it and it'll show you your impressions. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask Isaac right now, he can do it about, he, he can do a screenshot of this call if he wants to, he can take a picture with his phone. Uh, but what I want him to do is I want him to put a picture on LinkedIn Isaac, this is going to uh, test your trust in me. I want you to take a screenshot of something or a picture, and I want you to write two lines of text about it. I don't want you to do anything else. No links, no hashtags, no promos, no nothing. And I'm, uh, I would like you to just post. It can be a screenshot and say, learning more about getting leads on LinkedIn. It can be a picture of something you've been up to today it can be anything don't overthink it just do one thing and i want you to write two sentences that's it two sentences i'm going to show you how to get visible with linkedin and how to stay visible with linkedin and then i'm going to build the whole show you the whole mechanics and isaac you're going to learn about um this in real time so what, let me know once you've got your picture and your text up okay. and then uh, everybody can do this and I'll show everybody how to do this. And actually, Sherry, you know about this little bit, so don't give it away. And Vikesh, you do, but it works, right? <laughs> so Isaac, let me know when you're up. Okay. I apologize. This, uh, this may take a second. Yeah. So the first thing we have to do is get our visibility with LinkedIn up. It doesn't matter how many connections you've got. This will work for everybody. Then I'm going to show you the mechanics. So I'll show you the mechanics of getting visible. 
how to stay visible, then I'll show you how the system works to bring you leads every day. Once you've got your um, AVP right, every single day. And in fact, just whilst Isaac's doing his thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. Um, this is a, a a little bit of an extreme example, but it's not. Uh, this is Gav Gillibrand. So he's just finishing up on the program that I do, implemented this. Now, he did have a little advantage because he had a big high connection numbers. But in the six weeks of running the system, he got 537 leads. Now, that's not what we say is it is realistic for most people but most people can pull off about a hundred in six weeks if they've been on linkedin for a while if they've got more than a thousand connections and if they go at it um consistently the biggest hurdle is getting the um getting the uh, avp right so um let me just find isaac again so isaac once that posts up um let me just refresh. So I'm going to get Isaac to post that picture with two sentences. And then I'm going to show you how LinkedIn will get you visible. And then once we've got done that, we'll build the mechanics. How are you doing, Isaac? I am, uh, I am almost there. What, what again are the two sentences? Uh, it can be anything because I don't know okay. what picture you've taken. Just write okay. two sentences about it sure uh, somebody's asked a question here so i'll deal with the question whilst we're, we're uh, isaac's putting his post up. uh matthew yes what we do um just uh this isn't a sales pitch but i'll tell you what we do i will give you the little sales pitch at the end um but it's not going to be a big deal one um we have a program called 100 leads in six weeks so basically when you come on the program you do the avp together as a group we do it all together we test it in the content together, so you implement it. Then we build the PDF, then we build the event, and we build the poll. And basically, you implement them in real time. Now, some people take a little bit longer to get through it. So we say to people they can come back through the program twice so that they can go, do you know what? The first time was like I was getting to go go with it. Second time, I'm like flying with it. So um, uh, that's how we work it. There. so there's different options you can come on the basic one where you just come to the group calls and everybody's in it like this or you can have one-to-ones and do it one-to-one -one with me and the group calls but that's not really what i'm i'll tell you about that later right so isaac's post up. Perfect. thank you by the way i i uh, was going to say boy you know creating the avp is the biggest challenge the legwork is, is fairly easy but that so that that answers my question great yeah That's really really yeah. appreciate it the avp yeah, yeah. is 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 a, a hump and we know it's a hump. That's yeah, why we do that's a challenge. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Good. Thanks, Dean. Really. Yeah. So Isaac's put this post up. Not necessarily the best view of me, but um, I'll forgive him. Um, <laughs> right. So what I want to show you, and and I'll put the link to Isaac's post in, in the chat so you can go and have a look at this yourself. But I'm going to show you how LinkedIn, uh, and please feel free to participate if you want to. The first thing that's going to happen with your post on LinkedIn is in the first 15 minutes, LinkedIn is going to index this post. So LinkedIn will go, let's see how Isaac's network like this. So I it'll push it out and see how Isaac's network likes it, which is not the same way we might like it. So what LinkedIn's looking for is this. How many people stop on this post for three seconds but the magic number is 10 seconds so if people stay on this post for 10 seconds or more linkedin thinks this post is amazing that's the first thing 10 seconds the second thing linkedin's looking for is comments how people comment on the post tip more than four words is better so i'm going to show you as an example Isaac, can you look at that post previously and see what the impressions were? You know, the one you did four days ago. Oh, um, I believe it was 172, but let me. Uh, 172. Let me okay. So just for fact checking here, there's 79 of us on the call, 79 people, right? So I, I just want you to remember that number. 
We'll do this exercise, then we'll move on to the mechanics. I'm sorry, do I have an action item here? Uh, no, you don't have to. I'm just going to show you. Uh, so 172 was your views. Um, so the next thing LinkedIn's going to look at is comments. So if you get decent comments and 10 second stops, as we call it, LinkedIn's going to love it. And the final thing is how people react. Now, shares, shares, I'm going to say this, and some people won't like this, shares are bad. Not for, not for the person whose content's been shared, but for you. It's better to do your own posts, even if they're short and sweet and snappy. Shares are not healthy for your account. And if you go long periods without getting engagement, LinkedIn will actually, you'll see your visibility disappear. And we're going to fix Isaac's vis visibility in about 15 minutes. So here's what I want some of, some of you to do. And this is going to take, I don't want all 77 people to do this because it's too much. What I'd like some of you to do, and I'm saying some of you, um, shares the benefits of the creator, not the sharer. Yes, that's true. So what I'd like some of you to do is go click on the post and I'd like some of you to just count to 10 on the post and leave. And some of you go over to the post, uh, count to 10 and comment. And some of you go to the post, count to 10 and like. Just pick, yeah? I'm deliberately not telling everybody to do it because I don't want everybody to do it because that would be a massive cheat. Really, I want 10 people to do it. So can we do that now? And Isaac, your best views, the post previously, the views was 172 and you did it four days ago, right? Yes. Actually, it was 212. My apologies. 212. Okay. So. A few of you are going to do this. Oh, wow. Right. So uh, I don't need any more to do it. I don't need any more to do it. Some of you have done it. Isaac, can you refresh your browser and tell me how many views this post has got so far? Nobody else do it because I don't want to rig the impressions. And I'm sorry. Is this the post I just posted for you yep. or the one you've... Yeah, you're, the new, you're the new one. The new one okay. you posted. Just refresh right. the browser and the impressions okay. will show up. Okay. And in a, it's four minutes old. So in 11 minutes time, LinkedIn's going to go, geez, this post popular, send it to the world. I have 100 impressions. 100 impressions, 14, 15 likes and eight comments. 100 yes. impressions in four minutes. So Isaac, just keep an eye on that. I'm going to come back to you in 10 minutes. I'm going to ask you how this works. I'm going to explain how you get that crowd and hold it. And I'm going to show you how everybody how to do that, not just with this little cheat we've just done, but um, to do it properly. I, you know, I should I should quickly throw in that I, this is particularly relevant to me because I I write a column twice a month in the Minneapolis newspaper where I live, and I get remarkably little engagement when I post it on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we can fix the engagement piece because if. If you post your content, if you post your event, if you post your lead magnet and you don't have your visibility fixed, guess what? You won't get any leads. So what we've done there is a little cheat and we have a little group where you can use that to rebuild your um, your visibility. It's not a substitute for visibility. It's not about fake likes. It's about training the algorithm to pay attention to you and getting things moving. So I'm going to show you now just the process of what we do. So uh, let me just zoom out. So this is the process. Now, we have a fuller process in our accelerator program, but this is, this is what we do with our AVP. So we grow our network, or if we've got a network already, um, we have our existing connections. For the new connections, we have our lead magnet our PDF, and we give them the PDF as a message. I'm going to show you what the message looks like because it's really cool because it doesn't look like a sales pitch. It's actually not a sales pitch. If, they, if they're hungry for pizza without getting fat, 
and they see the say that message what are they going to do curiosity kills cats right curiosity they have to know more so they click to go i want that pdf give you their email address and they download it immediately i now know that person loves pizza and doesn't want to get fat i know that's a really cheesy way of put it. cheesy <laughs> um uh, simplistic way of doing it but that's the way i've done it the avp has done all of this stuff then i deliver the pdf and we have a simple framework of how to follow up to book a call in our accelerator program we actually automate this whole process so you get calls no ads you don't need any ads you don't need any sales pitches people just book in that's the second part of this process which isn't here i'll show you it if we have time so new connections is this way existing connections is this way same con same piece of content and the content production in other words putting stuff out in the feed is the same process one process many different ways to skin the cat same pdf and here's the fascinating thing has anybody ever downloaded a pdf from social media yeah how many of you read them most people don't read them or they have well intention to read them but never quite do or never quite read them all so what happens is people obsess about making a pdf that's amazing but actually it's not about the pdf that makes it amazing it's all of these little mechanics that make it work it's actually comes down to one sentence the success of your pdf comes down to one sentence and i'll show you um an example this is mine one of mine right this is one of mine that i use and i make some new ones every month but i could rinse this for the next three months if i want to i like to make new ones so this one i actually made in the recent 100 leads program i actually made it during the program launched it gave everybody the templates for it so they could just copy it including the visuals um and basically here's how i get uh and i'll just go to my linkedin there there it is in the feed let me just refresh my browser there it is sat in the feed that i posted an hour ago yeah i only got 80 impressions on this because i just dumped it out um let's just see if anybody's on the call here uh jb floyd's here i think so here's how i would do it with a new question connection I don't know where JB, I didn't look at JB's profile beforehand. That message gets me, oh, he's, he's on it. That message, yeah, gets me about 250 leads a week with a mix of back through old connections and new what do you think makes that work anybody want to guess what makes that work <laughs> what do you think makes that work i'll tell you what makes that work it's that sentence there how to run to run to run away from download the free guide so people who are curious curiosity kills cats remember click it go through no advertising no no complications no confusion do you want it do you not do you want it do you not it's a choice a binary choice and guess what people do it this is the results of my lead magnet so that's since last monday there we go
And if I go and show you the back end of this, some of you who are on the program have seen this. So bear with me. Then I'll come back to Isaac and show you why that matters. So let me just go to marketing. Here it is. 1,734 unique people have visited that page and 605 of them have converted into leads from that page. So 35% of them. It's actually fallen a bit because I've been a bit more aggressive with it. That's since the 12th of September. That's two weeks. Is that right? Two weeks today. So in two weeks, I've got 605 leads. Now I've got a copy of this that I use for email, which is different, but 605 leads in two weeks, all from doing this process. Those three. Now, in addition to that, and then we'll come to Isaac. In addition to that, I'll just show you again. Because this is what we do in the program. Uh, I've gone to the wrong place. Sorry. On my company page. Oh, I've got a free webinar about that, that same book where I'll be teaching the book like this. And I got 100 people there too. And that's three weeks away. So I'm using one piece of content to bring me leads through a live event through so a live event and the pdf so pdf live event loaded poll let me show you the loaded poll and then we'll come back to isaac isaac if you can refresh your browser because i'm going to ask you in a second hopefully we've passed 15 minutes here's my loaded poll with 170 votes yeah Everybody see the loaded poll? How many inbound leads are you getting from LinkedIn? Question mark. None, 45%. They're raising their hands and showing me that I can help them. I could do with a few more. 75% of people, because I've used my AVP to help me create this message, 75% of them have told me they need help. And when I click the poll, I can see who those people are. So guess what? Thanks so much for voting on my poll, X. I spotted your answer. So, Isaac, how's your post? It's at 219 impressions. So it's at 219 impressions so far. 219. And as long as we haven't, unless 73 of us have looked at that multiple times, yeah. Actually, we, it's up to 240 now. It's up to 240 from two minutes ago. Yeah, 240. And we've just passed 15 minutes. So LinkedIn is now going to push this post out to more and more of Isaac's connections. And as they engage, as they respond, uh, as they respond, it will push it to more. So um, David West said, what, what was the single sentence? That's it. That sentence does all the work. So the AVP helps you find that one sentence that gets people to say, I need you. Once we found that sentence, we just talk about it in lots of different ways all across LinkedIn all the time. And guess what we do? It's called agitation. The people who have a pain have to see it. What happens in real life is we decide the a uh, we decide we don't want to say the same things over and over again, and so we shift our message, we shift our topics, we shift all the things around, and what happens is we're not known for anything. We don't resonate with anything. Tim Dawes, what's the AVP? The AVP is the audience value proposition. In other words, what is worthwhile the audience giving you their attention? If you want people's attention, you've got to service them and we are not our clients because we don't have the same needs. 
if I, if somebody did me a group call on how to get leads from LinkedIn every week, I'm not interested because I'm doing that. But if you are want leads from LinkedIn every week, guess what? You're interested, so you're here. So we're always creating messages that appeal to the audience where they're at and where they want to be. So what they're dealing with and what they where they want to go. So the AVP is foundational. If you, without it, you'll just talk over people's heads or you'll talk in very unemotive language. Yeah. So let me, uh, should we do one little test? Uh, uh, Tim, actually, we have a mix. Uh, we have two parts to our business. So uh, Sher Sherry knows us from our corporate business. And actually, Vikesh knows us from our small business side. Uh, yeah. So actually, we've got the both on the same call, which is cool, actually. Um. But let me just do an experiment with you. Everybody good for an experiment? I'm going to talk. Um, yeah, Elliot, good good point. There, there needs to be something actionable in it, but it, it can't be giving away the whole game. So I'm pushing the boat out a little bit here because I'll tell you why. I know how easy it is to get tongue tied up in the mechanics of this and miss that the AVP is actually the pivotal part. So I'll I'll stop short of say, saying exactly how to fill the AVP in because that's how I make money. But I'm showing you all the other bits that will help you in other ways. Um, we're going to do a little exercise. Who's been to the dentist? Who's been to the dentist, right? Who's ever had to have an emergency dental appointment? Toothaches, cracked tooth, all that stuff, right? Great. Uh, anybody ever had a dream about losing teeth? Anybody had the nightmare of dream? Yeah, great. Okay. Um, let's imagine you wake up in the morning, you wake up tomorrow morning, and you wake up and your two front teeth are completely gone. You don't know what's happened to them. You've swallowed them in the night, but they've gone. Do you meet with clients the next day? Okay. Now I'm going to get really gross because I'm a Northern Brit here. Let's imagine you've had a, a really nice lunch, a sandwich today, and you had, you know, like seeds in your bread. You had seeds in the bread. And now you've just realized as you've moved your tongue around your mouth, you've just realized you've got a, one of those little seeds stuck between your teeth. Right. I am going somewhere here, please. I promise you I am going somewhere. Anybody ever had the seeds in their teeth? Yeah. And they spend ages like mm, trying to get it out. Yeah. OK. Do you think, has anybody checked their teeth in the last few moments as I've been talking about teeth? Yeah. So the analysis is, uh, right, when you start to talk about something that's important to somebody and they have a, um, even just a mild nervousness towards something or a pain or a, something in the back of the mind, and as you start to talk about it, you actually bring it to the surface. So when you're posting content, one of the key things you should be doing is bringing the issues to the surface, not just with a stick, but carrot and stick together. Because when you get people to metaphorically check their teeth, they're going, that's me. You helped me. You helped me see that I have your need. Whenever you help people understand their problem well it better, you automatically gain their authority, their trust, and their credibility. I just did the AVP method on you about teeth. I talked about it in my content, spoke about it, and some of you checked your teeth. Now, if I then said, oh, I've got this guide about protecting your teeth, you'd probably be curious. You'd probably click through. Not all of you on the call, just the ones who were a little bit sensitive. That's how it works. So I just did it in real time in conversation. The AVP helps you think about it from the audience's perspective and know those sentences and those phrases to, I hate to say the word, trigger people to go, I need to know more.
Isaac, how's your post? Uh, just a moment. I've got a Q&A in a second. So we're, I want to open it up. You can come I'm at 305, 305. 305. And we are 22 minutes in. Now, let me give you the final bit on this piece with Isaac. Then I'll do Q&A and I'll tell you about the 100 leads if you want to know. Um, so the reason why this is working for Isaac is because the algorithm has been tricked early on to thinking this is a great post. Let's just be honest. Half the things that are great posts aren't great posts. They're, the algorithm just fell behind it and it becomes a great post. Yeah. So Isaac, you've made this. In, I'm not just crit critiquing you, but you made this in how many minutes? Uh, one. One minute. Yeah. But already this this post, by the way, tomorrow, by tomorrow, will be in the 1,500, 2,000 views because LinkedIn has now decided it's going to show people. And obviously, the more people it decides to show, the more engagement it's going to get. It's just that simple. So here's what we do. We have posts that are deliberately designed to build our audience, engagement posts. And then we have posts that are deliberately designed to promote. And we mix those two things together so that we stay highly visible whilst we're getting our message, our lead magnet, and our content out there that's going to attract and grow the audience that need what we sell. And you use the two things together. I put something out that I know people are going to comment and engage with, and then I put something out that gets me leads or gets me interest or builds my audience or attracts people who resonate with issues. And I do those two things together. Not every post should be promotional, i.e. buy my stuff. It should be like alternated so that you keep the audience, you keep yourself visible. Here's the mistake some people make. Some people get so excited by the, these posts, these kind of style posts, that that's all they do. And what happens is they build a big following and they get no business from and no leads. Then you have the opposite. The people who promote, 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 everything's a promotional or buy my stuff or uh, book a call. And what happens is they get little engagement and so they become invisible. So you have some people who are highly visible making no money. And then you have some invisible people making no money. The middle road is if I do a little bit of this and a little bit of that, I actually gain an audience and keep the traction. It's the two things together. Just like carrot and stick, it's engagement and promotional together. Go too far with one or the other, and you either gain an audience that don't buy or you lose an audience that don't buy. <laughs> they just don't see it. So the final bit I want to share um, on this before we do the Q&A is obviously you've seen how my mechanisms work. I did say I'd show you the accelerator version of this so i'll just show you the accelerator version but if any of you want to go do you know what dean i'm up for this you can join us 13th of october we start again the seven weeks where we build the process and then once we build the process you actually implement it um so we implement it all together inside the program get your lead magnet up and running get your pdf running get your event running so that you start to get leads there is a big hump in the first couple of weeks. I'll tell you that now. You have to get your AVP finished. This is the accelerator model, which is obviously way more complicated. It's all off organic LinkedIn, all of it. Yeah, you can do all of this, even if you've got 200 connections. It's a bit slower, but you can do it. I've got um, Gavin. Uh, he's done his 537 leads um, in six weeks. Um, he's got his event tomorrow with 231 people in it. So yes, a can of soup. Yes. So imagine it's like this. Um, maybe not as many. We don't like to do it with so many people, but we do it like this. Um, you can have extra sessions one-to-one -one with me, which a few people have. I think Vikesh had that. Um, one-to-ones every week with me so we can check it together and go, let's get it, get it implemented. Um, or you can just do it where it's just the group sessions everybody gets the group sessions together there's a digital training library so you can keep you know keep moving forward 
uh, outside of the sessions, but some people do one-to-ones as well. So uh, this is it. Uh, let me pull it up. This is it. This is the program. I'll put the link in the chat. I'm not going to hound you or you know uh, anything like that, but it's here. You want it, you want to solve it, you know what to do. Q&A now. I'm going to shut up. I might come back to Isaac again a couple of times. Um, Catherine, I'm going to send the recording to everybody tomorrow. Um, any more questions? If there's something I've said, uh, Ian, don't waste any money on ads. I wouldn't waste any money on ads. Um, I, I, I Basically, within, within a couple of months, you can actually have organic traction as um uh let's have a look whoa we've got a few questions here uh do, um uh hang on a second steve what if your product doesn't does different things for different people then then what steve everybody's got that scenario um in some way shape or form what you have to do is focus on one group of people with one group of motivations to start with, and then you can diversify out. So you might have, like uh, Tina, she might have HR, then she might have CEOs, then she might have finance department. They've all got different motivations. But you start with one, get one working, and then you can work on another. The other thing that I haven't mentioned in here is once the program's once the system's running, we show you how you can make it run pretty much automatic. Pretty much. They just come in. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to say too much about that here because I'll get shot. Um, accelerator program. So the accelerator program is a bit different. So the accelerator program, you get the 100 leads inside the program anyway because we build on top of it. But... Um, what we tend to do with the accelerator is say, right, here's all the material. You set your own deadline because you've got accelerator access and coaching every week for a year. So you can take it at your own pace. Um, so some people are like, no, I want this done as fast as possible. Other people go, do you know what? I'm going to spend three months getting it all right. And then the next nine months actually perfecting it and getting the leads. But, you know, some people, 100 leads is very intense. You come out the other side, you've got some leads. Is it perfect in that six weeks? No, but you've got a clunky machine that's working that you can improve over time because you know how it works. Accelerator is about a well-oiled machine and then moving it off platform onto TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and email to do the same process, but across everything, across every channel. Yes. So, Christine, good question. Good question. Um, uh, a deal. Yes, I'll come to you in a moment. Um, uh, Jennifer, um, if you don't have a large network, yes. So what we can do, part of the process is to grow your network. So part of the process is growing your network. I recommend Sales Navigator and we can give you, if you haven't got it, uh, if you've never had Sales Navigator, two months free and we show you how to use it and how you can grow your network quickly using Sales Navigator. Um, the end of, end of the day, you only need, um, you know, to get consistent leads, you, you can grow your network. You can you add 100 people per week tops. You, there is some workarounds which we show you, but you can add 100 tops. Typically, most people get about 40 connections after they follow our process. Pos at least 40 they follow our process to get connected to people per week and out of that 40 we would be saying that you should be getting uh, once your pdf and all that stuff's optimized you should be getting somewhere between 10 and 15 but let's say 10 leads per week um if you then want to run the event the event will give you probably another 60 or 70 so inside of a six-week period of running the system, you're going to be 60, probably 110-ish leads. Um, so um, I'm just going through. Isaac, uh, LinkedIn's obviously one of the better ones for C-levels, except for Twitter. Twitter's pretty good for C-levels too. Um, Agatha, I'm going to come to your question in a moment. Uh, and I'll show the answer of how to do that. So, Adil, do you want to ask your question? 
Yeah, hi Dean. Um, I was in the middle of writing an article about the work that I do. It's basically recruitment. Now that you've shown me that uh, the PDF thing works, I'm thinking of turning it turning it into a PDF. Yeah. But uh, how do I get people to download the PDF? Do I need to put it on a website because I don't have a website? Yeah. So where do I put it? Good question. The most important thing is you need a mechanism to get them to download. I recommend people lead pages because when you try and put it on a website, it becomes a bigger project than it needs to be. There's more distractions. Lead pages is the safest or easiest option. Now, there are other ways to do it, but lead pages is the quickest and fastest way to do it. Thank you. Um, I'll go to Carl. Ah, Carl. Um, is that only for inbound connection requests? So can you do the same when you send a connection request outbound? Yes, Carl, I use it for both. I use it for both. Um, Elliot, uh, MailChimp has landing pages too. So yes, you could use um, um, landing pages. Um, good question, George. Uh, I don't want to dig too much detail into what constitutes engagement versus promotional, but I, I encourage people to do a 50-50 split. But of course, not every promotional post call to action is download the PDF or um, buy my stuff. There's other types of promotional posts that you can do, which aren't necessarily as overtly promotional, but do help. Um, Agatha, how to grow network fast without sales navigator. So I'll show you this feature. It's a bit complicated. Um, and uh, LinkedIn used to have what's called a contact upload feature. And when you click into my network and go to contacts, you can actually add contacts into LinkedIn if you have email addresses. So when you click this, you can go, right, I've got a list of prospects. You know, maybe I've bought a list or what have you. You can sync that list up into your email and then sync your email up to LinkedIn. And then LinkedIn will match all of the people in your contacts. So some of you might need to clean up your contacts first. Um, sync all your contacts and then when you click and upload linkedin will sync all your contacts and say hey do you want to send these all a connection request and you can send roughly the biggest i've done is uh two and a half thousand connection requests in one go literally in one go two and a half thousand sherry you've done this before haven't you um so sherry i don't know i don't want to put you on the spot but you've you you we had a little mission with you growing your network, didn't we? Correct. We did. And, and we it, got it you up by three, four hundred, was it, in one go? I can't remember. Um, yeah. Yeah. We loaded like a thousand and I think you'd get three hundred, but it's it's pretty effective. Yeah. So um so look, I'd love you to uh, hopefully that's giving you an overview. I'll send you some of the um uh PDFs. Uh, I'll send you the replay. If you want to make this happen, there's about two weeks to go until we start. And up to the end of the month, we have the early bird on. So you can get 200 quid off, uh, $200 actually now as well because of the price changes. So if you want to join me, it's over seven weeks. Each week there's homework. Uh, in other words, things you have to do to build this system. And we get we try and get everybody with the system running about about halfway, just over halfway through. So you've got three weeks of running the system. So if you want to join, I will send you the links tomorrow. Once it's full, it's full just because of the way it works. Um, we don't want, we can't have like tons of people in there because it becomes unmanageable. Um, but the whole system can be up and running. There's a couple of caveats. So the first thing is you have to have a service ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> if you're in startup phase, you need to get your service nailed first. Um, that's the first thing. Second thing is um, B to C. So if you're selling to consumers, um, it's it's you know coaching is probably the exception to the rule. But if you're selling things um, to consumers, it's probably not a good fit. And the other one, what was the other one? It's better for people who are selling higher value things. The reason I say this is if you got a hundred leads, but your sale price is fifty dollars. It's, it's kind of not worth doing. Yeah. 
Um, so you need a price point that makes sense. If you if you got a hundred leads in six weeks, and let's say you could convert four or five of them in that period, it has to be worth your while on the ROI. Yeah. So you need to just do the maths there because I'd hate for you to come on and go. Actually, I've got a twenty five dollar thing, and I need ten thousand leads. Can we have ten thousand leads in the next six weeks? I'd probably um, say there's your money back. It's not a good idea for you. Any other questions? Um, Dean, I've got another question. Um, sure. I, did I hear you say on another session um, that um, if you've got a brand that um, has consumer offerings as well, that you could divide social channels? So, for example, use mm -hmm. Instagram and Facebook for yeah. your... Yes. So the principle, the principle works um, because obviously this model in the accelerator we break this off into different social channels but uh, instagram works really well for consumers if you've got a high value offering that's not 50 quid then yes you can use the same model on instagram slight changes but yes you can oh um yep yeah. sorry um thank you for being generous with your answer because that was answering even more than i asked so okay. the same model um <laughs> <laughs> but um uh but but obviously different product sets so you'd go yeah. B to B, yeah yeah but there'd be a different avp for each group lovely um, well brilliant uh, Emma, i want to hear your post your impressions now um so sherry yes if you want to have a chat with us uh just drop me a line you got my emails um uh i've got a question here from tim uh, yes. So Tim, yes, that would work for HR department leads. Yeah. Yes. So yes, that works because it's service. Jennifer, um, Jennifer, the connection request message depends on how, how you approach the connection. We teach two different ways to connect. One is a bit less personal. So actually we found it's kind of oddly no connection message or a very relevant connection message anything in between like oh i'm just building my network or i'd love to be part of your network it sounds so weird uh I, immediately it's like what do you want yeah so i i i do a mix i'll either do none or it will be very personal and very relevant and very written off written down isaac 466 views in 25 minutes or so something like that Right, guys, I'll also send you the link if you want to use our little WhatsApp group to get your post going. Uh, I'll send you that if you want to use it with the rules. Um, I'm going to wrap up and say thank you so much for joining. If you've had value from this, please do drop me a line on LinkedIn. Come and connect with me. More than happy to connect with you. Um, I think my little system that I've been rolling out for the last few years is a no-brainer. Uh, go and think about it. If it's something, if leads are your big problem, you know you can get, once you get somebody on a call, you're good. If leads is your issue, I know that if you put the work in and come join us, it will deliver. But uh, that's for you to ponder and think about. Um, right, I've got to go. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Oh, can of soup. I don't know your name, by the way, can of soup, but please, could you uh, put that on my LinkedIn? That would be awesome. Um, uh, guys, go think about it. I'll send you an email tomorrow with the recording. I'll send you the link if you want to sign up. But if you've got questions about it, just drop me a line too, and I'll send you all the PDFs. Thank you so much. Appreciate you coming on in the evening. Uh, don't forget, we've got all the other free webinars uh, to come and join, and uh, see you on LinkedIn. Thanks, everybody.